Three years ago, a small Greek island served as the source of an outbreak that would change the fate of the world. What had started as an isolated incident turned into an apocalyptic terror that would alter our very reality. The zombie apocalypse spread, and it spread fast. It was thought that a few carrier ships or a tourist boat had been the source of the spread back to the mainland, but no one really knew for certain. What we did know was this. If you couldn't reverse the path that the world had taken, then you had to figure out a way to survive in it. That's what I did. I found a way to survive. As the dead began to roam the streets, people revealed their true colors. There were plenty who looked at this as a way to gain untold power, trying to pull their weight and hoard food. But there were others who were kind enough to take in strangers, to help children as families fell apart, to teach the unknowing how to use a gun and shoot for the brain. And then of course there were people like me. The tires of the canvas-backed army truck caught on a dip in the road. My CO, Harley, cleared his throat. All right, everyone. As you know, we're about to be leading a hunt into untamed waters. Atlanta is a bad city to be stuck in anyway. But we're not going after the small fries today. We want the big bass. Zombie hunting had become one of the most popular sports in the world. Some people did it for the thrill. I did it for the supplies. We were being paid by a wealthy billionaire to catch certain zombies and bring their heads back to be mounted on the wall. And the big bass is dangerous. Soldiers already in the middle of an experiment during the initial outbreak, said Harley. That means they're bigger, stronger, and meaner than anything we've seen before. One of my teammates, Charlie, asked, Are there runners? We've got runners and we've got spitters, said Harley. And there's no telling what else has been done to these sorry sons of bitches either. Be on your toes, shoot for the head, or don't shoot at all. We repeat the mantra and then fall silent. The truck stops on a back road. Atlanta is empty at first glance, but that's just because it's filled with spitters. They like to gather in dark areas and don't tend to come out during the daylight hours. It made the roads easier to traverse when we got out of the truck, at least. I kept the gun in my hand. This was the most difficult job that I had ever been on. But I had a reason to do it. Money didn't mean anything these days. But food and water? Medicine? That did. I had a wife and a daughter at home waiting for me. Bringing in a fish like this. It would keep them fed for half a year at least. So I was determined. Unfortunately, the determination made me stupid. I stepped away from the main group, exploring the streets on my own. The sound of something knocking over metal caught my attention, and I moved towards an alley, gun drawn, and there I saw it. One of the zombie mutes bent over a poor human. Her stomach had been ripped open, the zombie mute feasting from her entrails happily. Three years in and the sounds were still enough to make my stomach churn. The zombie was big and ugly. Pale skin riddled in boils, which had festered and burst, causing the whole left side of his neck to appear deformed. His hands had doubled in size, and his fingers looked broken, but still pretty dangerous. His bones cracked and creaked each time that he moved. I lined up my sights, took a breath, and fired. Bang! The bullet went straight through the head. That should have been a kill shot but it just seemed to make this mute angry. The zombie was instantly unconcerned with its meal and had turned its attention onto me. Its jaw dropped down, nearly dislocating with the force of its rage-filled scream. It got up and lumbered towards me. A runner. That meant it was fast, and it was smart. Shit. I shot again and the bullet went straight between the eyes. That's when it hit me. There were so many boils and pustules on this freak. It was like a protective coating. I couldn't get a shot through to the brain. I was going to have to try and take the head itself off. Dropping my gun, I scrambled backwards, pulling out my machete. Just as a massive hand slammed into my ribs, it hit me with enough force that I went flying through the air like a rag doll. My head hit the ground first, then the rest of me. My ears were ringing. Desperately, I tried to find where the machete had slid to. 
The mute bared down on me, caging me in. Teeth snapped for my throat, and drool dripped hot onto my skin. I thought of my family back home, and the rest of my team casting a final goodbye to them. And then, a deluge of hot rancid blood spilled down on me. The zombie mute's head fell to the side, rolling under a crashed car. The body came down on top of me, the weight so great that it knocked the air out of my lungs. I let out a huff, shoving it off. Harley grabbed my hand and helped me up onto my feet. He said, You need to be more careful. What part of not treating this like a normal hunt didn't you understand? Sorry, I said. I'll be more careful. And considering I wanted to get back to my family, I meant it. <laughs>